Hello guys, my name is Christian Trujillo and today I'm going to be showing you how to record using your Behringer Zenex X1204 USB directly into your computer using the USB cable and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on the problem that I encountered uh, some of the uh, issues that you may may encounter uh, while recording on this uh, mixer and just some helpful information uh, I was originally using a Tascam US-144 uh, external interface, which works great. Um, it was a really fantastic interface. And I was using just my mixer, um, using the uh, outputs here to the interface. Actually, the main outputs using the, the XLRs here into the uh, uh, interface. But unfortunately, my interface uh, burned, so I cannot use that anymore. However, I I knew that my mixer came with a USB output here, and I knew that I could use it to record. Unfortunately, I was having a lot of problems. The first problem that I encountered is that I was using a different driver. I was using the ASI-04 all um version 2 and I was selecting the um, USB codec um, from the Behringer mixer because what happens is that when you first plug in your mixer it um, it automatically detects it so so the the Windows operating system here detects the Behringer external sound card or uh, mixer now it doesn't say Behringer. This is because I already went through the installation of the actual drivers, but um, Windows doesn't realize that it's an external sound card, and it just names it uh, Codec um, USB Codec Sound or something like that. I can't remember the, the exact name. But anyways, so I was using that. I was using the SIO4 version two to record on Cubase. And it was just really bad because there was latency. There was some latency wasn't very noticeable, but it was still there. And it was just really annoying. So while I was going through the through the uh, documentation of my of my mixer, I noticed that uh, it said here ultra low latency driver downloadable at Behringer. So I got pretty excited. I went to the Behringer site, found my mixer. And I noticed that under the downloads here, there was nothing to download. No drivers and no software, etc., etc. So I was just really disappointed. There was only pictures to download. Um, after some research here within uh, their uh, website, I noticed that if you go to support and then click on downloads and drivers, you'll find your uh, the line the line that at uh, of your device, which in this case is the Xenex line, <clears throat> and uh, you will find drivers as well as uh, well drivers for pretty much all of the different uh, operating systems, including uh, Mac OS and uh, Windows. Something interesting to note here is that I'm running Windows 8, but uh, I downloaded the the Windows 7 at uh, 64 bit because I'm running 64 bit Windows 8 with 64 bit so I downloaded these uh, these drivers which pretty much you click here and you'll download the driver you save it it's a zip file so once you unzip it I'm not gonna go through the whole installation again because I already did that so if you go to Behringer uh, to the folder you just downloaded uh, let me just show you the readme text file here you'll notice that um, the support uh, the supported hardware for these drivers are all this and even the bundled uh, Zenex uh, Zenex mixers. The devices that are not supported is the C dash one U, the BCD two hundred, and the BCD three hundred. Uh, there's some other information here, but it's just really really straightforward. Basically, what you do when you unzip the folder, you click on the folder uh, inside here. And click on the setup.exe uh, file. This is gonna come up. You click OK. Then you install the driver. 
as you install the driver, it's going to ask you to plug in your mixer using the USB cable. Uh, again, do remember that your mixer has a USB port in the back. It looks kind of like this. And that's where you're going to connect your, your USB. If for some reason your USB cable uh, is broken or you lost it, if you have a printer, an old printer, the USB cable for the printer will work. It's the same connection. So that should work as well. Um, so you plug it in, you follow the instructions for the setup, and then it's going to ask you to restart the computer. Go ahead and do that. It's really easy to install. Once it's done, restart your computer. The computer is going to come back up. I am using Cubase to, to record. So I'm just going to show you how you set up your mixer on Cubase. Before you install the actual drivers, you will not see your, your mixer. So it's going to drive you crazy because... Everywhere you read, it says that, it, you know, Windows detects the drivers and it's just really easy, plug and play, basically, and that uh, Windows will detect it. So I thought that Cubase will, should detect my mixer, but it didn't. But after you install the actual drivers, or I'm t uh, the ones I'm telling you, I will put the link on the description. Um, you will then see the uh, mixer on the devices. So you basically open Cubase or any recording software you're using. And where you set up your devices, which in this case is devices, device setup, go to the VST audio system. Click on the drop down under the VST audio system here and select Behringer USB audio. That's when the Behringer mixer is going to show. So you click there, you click switch, and then you click OK. That's all you need to do. Now, for me, it worked great with the default um, settings here. I didn't have to change anything. I actually tried to change the system preferences to the high speed, but it was giving me a lot of problems. So I just went ahead and just left it uh, as default and it worked great. There was no latency, no latency at all. So it was actually really, really cool. A um, couple of things that you, that you should know is that well of course if you know what you're doing if you're if you have a, if you have a really um fast computer and um you want to change the settings here and you think that uh, it might work better for you go ahead be my guest but again for me it worked great with no latency re while recording um using the default settings here um so let me start a new project here really quick an empty project and I'm going to right click here, add a new track, say OK. And then um, in this case, I'm going to select here. Now you can see my, my mic is actually, it's actually uh, picking up my mic here on Cubase. Um, so, so all that's working. You can see that's working. Um, so test, test, there you go. So one thing that uh, I noticed when recording was that um, I couldn't hear the um, the click. So I had my click and, and I was recording my guitar or, or, or whatever it is that I was recording and I couldn't hear the click. So I was, why is it that I can't hear my click? So on your Behringer um, mixer, I'm going to show you just a couple of things here. Hopefully I can bring this up here and I can show you. On your mixer, you have these buttons, these buttons here. For you to be able to hear what what you're recording, of course you're gonna plug in your uh, headphones here. Make sure these two buttons are not pushed, so they're not pressed. And also make sure that this one here, the two uh, TR USB, is is pressed. And this one is not pressed. So unpress this one and press this one. Unpress this two as well. If you press this one here, you will hear both your guitar coming straight from the mixer into your headphones and then the one coming out of the computer into the uh, mixer. So do make sure that, you know, don't press this one. Otherwise, you're going to be hearing both guitars at the same time. It's kind of annoying, especially if you're running effects and all that stuff so if you just want to hear what's coming out of uh, uh, Cubase here then do make sure that um, 
this button is pushed but not this one so the way I have it is I have this one pushed here right here which is the main mix I have this one and this one um, unpressed and then this one unpressed and then this one pushed so this one unpressed this one unpressed so if you do that then you will hear um, the click and everything that comes out of the Cubase software or any other software that you're using um, if you want to uh, monitor what you what you hear too when when you play back you can push this button here um, one more thing to notice is that um, for the effects uh, I had to go and read the user's manual but if you haven't done that in to be able to for you to be able to actually use the effects and actually uh, make them uh, playable on the tracks you select the track that you want to play the the uh, the effects and then you go here and select the effect you will have the effect number here and then you push this knob for the effect to take um, effect basically into the track um, this is the effect knob here and it will give you as much effect as you want and um, so that's just just a couple of shortcuts a couple of uh, tips here to to remember just to help you out uh, when recording and uh, I think that's it I hope uh, this helps you please visit uh, my Christian social network at uh, msmatthew1820.com that's m1820.com uh, you can also listen to my songs right now they're only acoustic versions so go to christiantrujillo.com and uh, just any questions just let me know um, and I will be happy to help you alright thank you for watching